Welcome everybody to today's webinar, um, Fusion 360 for Woodwork. Uh, just going to give it another couple of seconds. We just still have a few more people just jumping in there. Um, hope everyone is well. Thanks for taking the time today to, to join us on this. Um, what I'm going to be showing today is I'm going to do a live webinar um, on how you can create uh, models uh, within Fusion 360 for woodworking, how to streamline your process, tips and tricks, and um, for anybody that hasn't used Fusion 360, you'll get a good insight of uh, what Fusion 360 can offer to your business um, and how user-friendly it is also. Okay, so yeah, we're going to just crack on there. So we've a, a, a good shot of people in there now at the moment. So um, yeah, my own name is Brian Fagan. Um, I'm with ProCAD around uh, two and a half years. I'm in industry almost uh, 20 years, in around 20 years. I know you're probably thinking I, I don't look like someone that, that uh, is in industry 20 years. I'm across quite young looking, I suppose. Um, but uh, no, um, yeah, so I'm in industry about 20 years um, across many different areas between aerospace, uh, medical devices, etc. So I've had numerous different roles throughout my career as well. I've been two maker by trade. Um, design engineer, production engineer, process engineer, transfer engineer. I've done an array of different uh, roles throughout my career, so that's kind of where it uh, brought me to ProCAD. So the one element I did like of all uh, throughout my industry was kind of training people and upskilling people, and um, so that was kind of in line with what ProCAD had to offer. So that's where I fell into ProCAD, so I'm the Fusion 360 expert and the CAM expert within ProCAD, so any CAM or Fusion issues or problems or training, uh, everything gets directed towards myself. Um, other products that I use are uh, Inventor and AutoCAD within the Autodesk range, so that's enough about me. Uh, what we're going to be doing here today, let's flick to the next slide. So yeah, I'm just going to crack on with the live demo today because um, because it's live, I probably will make some mistakes. I will have some PC issues, I'm sure. Uh, it happens every time as soon as I tend to go on live. Um, I don't like doing uh, video recordings and kind of talking over them. I prefer to let the viewers see it in real life of how Fusion is going to react uh, in everyday purposes. So... With that said, I'm just going to open up my Fusion. Uh, so here we have uh, Fusion opened up. So we can see that, like again, I'm only going to be doing around a 40-minute um, live demo. Um, that could end up in 30 minutes or could end up in 50 minutes, depending on how I get on with this. As I said, I will probably make a few mistakes. So I'm going to keep it very, very basic, because there's obviously a lot of people here online today that um, are going to be brand new to Fusion 360. Uh, as well as people that have been using Fusion 360 for a good while now, and they're just kind of looking to see are they missing any tips and tricks along the way. So you can see here I've just a very basic cabinet that I created up in Fusion 360. So I'm going to just start off uh, by uh, looking at um, a different model that I've created inside in Fusion 360 first. Let me just kind of look at this. So I've created a little staircase here between Fusion 3, within Fusion 360. So the process for this, you can see, and when I started to design this in Fusion 360, it creates a, a full timeline. You can see down here on the bottom of my screen. Um, just bear with me there. I never asked uh, any of my colleagues to make sure that you can see my screen, so I'm just going to double check that. And then can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Awesome, good cheers. Uh, so yeah, so we have this staircase here. So we want to kind of look at how uh, did I go about creating this uh, because it does look fairly complex. So uh, what I can do here is I can actually wind uh, time all the way back to the very start to when we had a blank uh, document. So you can see here we just have a very blank document. So the very first thing we can see here, if I just stretch this forward, we have a sketch. So I can actually go in and edit the sketch and kind of have a look at what I did here. So you can see here that I created just a circle of 359 degrees so you can see here it's uh, uh, with a known dimension of our uh, 1200 so finish out that sketch so I created a sketch and then I did a, a flange from that sketch to create um, this 3d model 
So the next thing then I did was I did an extrude to just make a straight flat piece from the end of this. So now we're nearly at the 360 degrees. So I've left a slight little gap there. And then what I did is I flattened this out. So I unrolled it. Then I did another sketch. I'll have a look at this sketch. We can see here that I created uh, a construction line and I created um, a rectangle basically. The next step I did then is as I extruded out that rectangle to create a step. I did another sketch. Again, I can go in and have a look at the sketch. We can see if I hover over this a little bit. You can see I just created uh, a circle on top of that uh, step plane. Again, I did another extrude, so now we've kind of got a step with a bar. Then I did a pattern up along using my construction line to create all of these steps. I created a couple of construction planes in order for me to create the, the bar. And then I created uh, two extrudes, uh, or press pulls, to pull the bar out at either end by about 100 mil. I both fillets on the end of the bar, sorry, and corner of the bar, I don't know what you call this part of the stairs, the rail, sorry, the rail is a better word. Um, so I, I got uh, two fillets on the end, and then I joined all of these bodies together. So now we can see we've got a stairs, we've got a flat panel. Again, I did another combine, so we've just got one body, is what I've created. So everything is joined together, and what should I do? I rolled it back up again. And now we can see that we're getting this type of a feature. I created a sketch of two circles. I uh, extruded them two circles and I did an extrude cut to get rid of the outside of this. And we can see what we're left with here. Again, I extruded that second circle straight up to make a bar to meet the middle. And then I just did a fillet on top. So you can see how simple, uh, sorry, not simple, but it's not a, a huge process in order for us to create um, this spiral stairs. So I'm going to move away from the stairs. I just kind of wanted to give you a bit of an insight of uh, how Fusion 360s work. But you can see as you're creating or designing with Fusion, everything is starting to be captured down here in the bottom in your timeline. And you can go back and forth. You can update your model uh, at any point. You can just basically you're reversing uh, uh, your history and you're changing dimensions. And then you can fast forward your history again to take into account all of them dimensions too. So I'm going to create a brand new document. And we're going to start seeing that our timeline will start um, happening down here at the bottom. So I haven't really done, um, uh, so I'm just going to create that cabinet um, that you've seen at the start. Um, so I, as I said, I will make mistakes. I haven't been practicing this, so I'm just going to kind of do it off the cuff so we can uh, add or um, subtract um, from the model. So I do have... Uh, picture of my timeline which I wanted to just share for a second. So we have a, a model here of a, or a, a drawing of 500 by 400 by 200 so I'm just going to go with that. So the first thing I want to do is create a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch I'm going to create it on the front plane. I'm going to create a two-point rectangle and I'm going to put in, it was 1200 in the length and it was 500 in the height and press enter. So there we have our length by our height created. At any stage if I wanted to update these I can double tap into that. I can update these dimensions very easily. Oops, not 5500. Okay, so at that point I'm going to um, what I want to do here is actually I'm going to rewind a bit, delete that, finish out my sketch. You'll notice there's a sketch created in my timeline, but it's empty, so I can right click and delete that. So I'm going to do it slightly different. Uh, again, as I said, this is all just popping into my head as we're doing this. So I'm going to go into uh, parameters and I'm going to create a few parameters. So this time I'm going to click on a user parameter. I'm going to call this L E N G H T. And again, apologies if I'm spelling things wrong. I'm not going to well too much of that. So I'm going to put in the length of 1200. I'm going to create another one called height. We're going to go 500. And let's create another one called DEPTH. I go 400. 
we'll create one more called um, plywood. And we'll say that is half inch, which is 12.7. And we're going to OK. So now we've got a few user parameters here, length, height, depth, and plywood. We're going to OK that. Again, going to go create a sketch on the front plane. I'm going to two-point rectangle, snap to zero, zero. And instead of buttoning 1200 this time, I'm just going to type in the word L-E-N-G-H-T. You can see it already pops up for me. I'll tab into the other dimension, and I'm going to put height, H-E-I-G-H-T. And press enter and enter a second layer. So, okay, it went down this way. I'm not too bothered by that. It doesn't really matter. So I have a rectangle created, length by height. You can see the FX. That is, means the FX means it's reading the parameter. I'm going to go and do an offset. I'm going to offset this. I'm going to offset this plywood. And we're going to OK that. So you can see it's gone to the outside. I actually want it to go to the inside. So I'm going to flip that, or else just put a minus in front of plywood, and it'll actually go inside. So I'm going to OK that. So there we have uh, two rectangles created. So I'm going to go line, and we're going to just close off these areas. There, and over this side. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Uh, it will start making sense to you anyway in a minute. So at that point, I can finish sketch. So now we have a sketch of two rectangles. I'm going to go extrude. I'm going to go with the bottom line here, inside here. So what do I want to, to what dimension do I want to put in here? So I'm going to put in DEPTH. There it is there. And we're going to go, instead of a new body, I'm going to go new component and create. So there we have our first panel. So we'll say that is the floor of the cabinet. So I'm going to right click that and I'm going to ground that. So that means when it's ground, it will not move. It's stuck in that position. So I'm going to turn back on my sketch, make it visible so I can see it all again. I'm going to do another extrude. I'm going to extrude dash D-E-P-T-H, enter. I don't want it to join. I want to call that new component because that's going to be the left part of my cabinet. Again, I'm going to go extrude. I'm going to do that, D-E-P-T-H. Again, new component. And another one here. D-E-P-T-H, and new component. And OK, so now we've got four new components. We've got one top, bottom, left, and right. We can rename all of these if one by doing a slow click. click. So we'll say floor, low L-E-F-T, sorry, top, and R-I-P-H-D. Right, so that is a very uh, simplified cabinet at the moment. So let's put it back on this. So we're going to go create a sketch. I'm going to go on the, create a sketch on the back here. And again, I can actually snap to these points. So I'm going to snap to the inside of this and finish sketch. So I just created a rectangle snapping from the inside to the inside down here, allowing me to do an extrude. I can select this. I'm going to type in PLY plywood. So you can see that's actually going out. So I'm going to stick a minus value in here. So I want it to go inwards. If I want that to sit in a little bit, I can do an offset of 5 mil. That's going the wrong way. 5 mil minus 5 mil. New component. OK, so there we have uh, a little bit of a, a lip into the back of the component or the back of the press. So now we can make the next part of this press. Cabinet, sorry, call it a press. So let's put a few shelves into this. So again, I'm going to select, uh, create a sketch, and I'm going to create a sketch here. I'm going to create a construction line. I'm going to look for the middle of this. Should be able to snap. There it is. Snaps there. And again, snap to there. So you can see I've got a construction line. It's dotted. I'm going to turn off my construction. I'm going to create a rectangle. Uh, just a random rectangle for now, and I'm going to go, the height of this is going to be H-E-I-G-H-T, H-E-I-G-H-T, I'm spelling this wrong away, oh, there we go, so now we've got the height, and again, I'm going to go and stick a plywood, so there's our uh, thickness of our 
uh, piece that we're using. So I'm going to use a symmetry constraint. So I'm going to select that and that and the middle line. And you can see it snaps into the middle line. So now what we want to do is I can drag this. So if I was to drag this roughly to here, you can see it's actually way too long because the height is actually from the very top to the very bottom. So it's, it would actually be height minus uh, plywood minus plywood. So if I go in here, I can go height minus plywood by two. And now you can see it's actually in line with this. So I'm actually going to take out by two and just go by plywood. So I want it to have a wee bit longer just for the crack because I want to try this and see will this work out for us. So I'm going to go the dimension from the bottom of this to the bottom of this is going to be uh, plywood divided by two. There we go. Okay, so you can see uh, my plywood has actually gone into the bottom. And it's gone into the top uh, halfway either side. So I'm going to go finish sketch on that. I'm going to go for an extrude. I'm going to select this. And I want to go to distance is going to be top object. So I want to go to the, this object here. And I'm going to do a new component. I'm going to OK that. So you can see it's actually intersecting. So if I was to do a, an inspect and interference on this whole piece, commute, you can see that it's actually giving me the green and the red, which is saying these are the areas that it's intersecting in this model at the moment. It's up to the whole model to see is there any overlaps and it's showing me that there are the two overlaps. So let's fix that. So if I come along here and I switch that off, so you can hide all of these just for the sake of um, seeing what's going on. So if I was to hide this component, so we say this is going to be uh, middle vertical. And this one is back. Okay, so now that we have that created, what I want to do is I want to actually make a cutout in this bottom piece to be able to slot this in so it has a, a rail we'd set to go in. So I'm going to do a combine. So I want to combine, uh, so the target body is going to be this, the tool body is going to be this. I want to do a cut, I want to keep my tool and I'll OK that. And the exact same up here, so again target body is this. My tool is this, I want to cut it and I want to keep the tool. There we go. So now if I turn off my vertical plane, I've actually got a ridge that I've cut out and on the top and on the bottom. So now it actually fits in. So if I was to do my interference again, we shouldn't have any interference in this whole model. And no interference is detected. So there we are, we're up to speed again. And we have a nice little ridge that this is going to be a little bit easier to assemble now. So again, if I go and create another sketch on the side here, let's go with, and let's find the mid plane again, or the midpoint. I forgot to put that construction, so I'm going to just select it, click on construction. Now we can see a construction line. I'm going to go again, just create random rectangle. This time we're going to go length. L E N L E N G H T uh, minus plywood. I want to slide by two. Just like that. Let's try this. Okay, let's go with length first. And then I'm gonna go length minus plywood by two. There we go. And I'm going to use my symmetry constraint again. So I'm going to select the top of that, the top of that, the middle there. We want to uh, put on the thickness of this is plywood. I'm going to use a collinear constraint this time to make sure that this line is in line with this line. So now it's in line there. It's in line there. We're not actually going to create the ridges this time. We're going to finish sketch. I'm going to turn on my sketch on create. Okay, so what I need to do is go back into my sketch. So I need to, I want to cut this in half. So I'm just going to create my sketch. I want to make uh, two components out of that. So I'm back into my sketch. I'm just going to draw a line from here to here. And a line from here to here. Let me see, will that work? I 
too many sketches on this first sketch is causing me issues there we go uh distance is going to be two object objects back there and then to go new component and there we have that shot put in uh okay so i won't do the same process over here we're just going to leave it like this for now i'm with 20 past now we're flying it um so now that we have this cabinet created what else do we need to do so we need to put in holes or uh, dowel pins etc so again what i can do is so if we want to put dowel pins on the top of this we'll say um i'm going to hide this so if i select this you can see that it underlines the top so i'm just going to hide that for now i'm going to create a sketch on this i'm going to go and select hole to draw a random hole here we'll say it will a nice thing about fusion as well if i want to create a parameter i can actually call this uh let's call this d-o-w-e-l equals eight and now i've actually created a parameter so if i go looking at my parameters we will see now that we've this dowel up here and it's eight mil so you can actually create um parameters on the fly you don't have to come in and create the user parameters at the very start like i showed you there you can actually just start creating them as you're sketching which is uh very very handy so so now we've got um that eight created we want to line this up so let's go with, from here to here it's going to be plywood divided by two that'll center it up for us and let's go with 100 we'll do there turn it up i'm going to do let's go with uh minus 10 mil to do a cut and there we have a hole created. If I wanted to do the same hole the other side, let's create a plane from the middle of that to the middle of this. That creates this plane here. I can then use my mirror and look for a feature. I can select this is my feature. The plane is this. We'll okay that. And there we have two holes put into this. So we need to create holes in the top of the part as well. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to create uh, an extrude. And I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to go up 20 mil. New component. Okay, that. Let me turn off some of these planes. So there's our little dowel that we have created. And we're putting it in there. If I turn back on the top and i make the left invisible for a minute let's see that so obviously there's no hole in there at the moment so what i'm going to do is I'm going to use my combine target body tool cut keep the tool okay there we have the hole created again very simply so again i'm not going to go and do that all around this part either but you're getting the idea of uh, how simple it is to just start using uh, Fusion as your modeling uh, tool and how simple it is to start just creating up very simple parts like this. So again, what we can do is we can come over here to insert. We have the option to go into McMaster car component inside here then, so we can find nuts and bolts and screws, etc. So maybe if I want to find a leg and let's find something that would look a little bit pretty in your sitting room. None of these look pretty for the sitting room. What are we after? This lad here, loop. And let's go with this guy. And we're going to take this out as a step file, download that. And there she is. So I'm just going to move that over here. So rotate it 90 degrees that way. Press OK on that. And there we have uh, a little leg. So we want to create the leg and put it somewhere down here. So I'm just going to get the positions fine. Create a point. Let's just create a point there. Sorry. Get rid of that. I want to go back in and edit my sketch. I just randomly drop the point. So I want to put that point as 100 this direction and 100 that direction. And I'm going to do a joint from the Go center that circle. And you can 
and click add point and boom there we have the leg created so again using mcmaster parts here uh, and we've got also manufacturing parts so if you had trunking or if you had profile you can come in you can uh, set up an account with this and um, you can start downloading all the different models from that they're free to to register on these sites as well mcmaster's parts diffusion so again you can get nuts bolts washers um, legs as we've seen here uh, there's a huge thousands of parts uh, inside here obviously some parts there will be no uh, models for like um, I tried uh, importing um, the cable tie obviously they didn't have that as a model so I couldn't bring in the cable tie um, which is um, normal I suppose so the next thing I want to do is I want to just start uh, looking at this model so we want to start putting um, appearances on this to start to make it look a bit more realistic so again in the modified panel we've got physical material we've got appearance both of these work the same physical material so if you did need to be um weight wise and you wanted to look at the, the mass etc button on physical material is where you'd want to go but if we're just looking to make it uh, pretty for a, a picture on the website or something we can come in and look for an appearance so we can see here we've loads of different appearances we've got different woods here uh we've got walnut and i can just start dragging these and dropping them uh pine is actually nicer than the walnut so let's go with that uh, or we've oak, uh, mahogany, uh, loads of different like, options here. So let's just go with oak. Straight out of Harvey Normans. And nearly there. So there we have our oak. So now it's starting to look a bit more like uh, the model I showed you to start. So the nice thing about what we were doing there was creating parameters like that. We don't, don't have to create the parameters. Um, we can just sketch up everything using dimensions but the nice thing about creating the parameters is if i go in here to my parameters now we can see that we have um all of these different user parameters so if i wanted to change the width of this cabinet to be um 2000 we can update that uh look at that this is why uh my manager tells me not to do things on live so if i go the other way i go thousand okay let's move out this shelf not, it's not agreeing with me today so I obviously didn't select uh, the certain um, I should have moved the object to this but I actually put in a dimension that's why it wasn't actually moving so I just removed that uh, shelf out for now I won't go back fixing it if I wanted to change the height I could put in 800 and we can see it updates very quickly um, again if I was using 20 mil uh, wood just thickens up everything we can see it thickens up the ridges and everything part of this so that's the nice thing about using parameters that you can start just moving all of these very easily and updating your um, cabinet very quickly you don't have to create loads of different cabinets we can just go in and start messing around with the parameters um, if i was to go with the top here and if we right click into that and we just go properties let's give it a a description so what was 1200 multiplied by 400 deep by 20 mil plywood uh, again it's everything is defaulted to steel so you'd obviously have to go into your physical material here change everything to wood if this uh, mattered to you uh, so we're just going to press ok keep it as steel for now so i can come along here go into my draw and go for design uh, it tells me i need to save it first uh we're going to go a3 that's fine let's just go with that perfect so now we've got our cabinet coming into 2d drawn so let's change this to maybe one is to 15 one is to 10 maybe and let's drop that here okay so there's our cabinet looking in from that side. We could do a projected view both ways. Let's give it an isometric view down here as well. We can double click into this isometric view. And there we go. So now we can start sticking dimensions on this. And there's our 1200 by our height by our width. Uh, etc so uh, we obviously put in loads more dimensions if needs be let's do a table and 
Yeah, of course it won't fit in for me. Let's move this over here a little bit. Move this age one there. Three days for now. Get that up here. Dash and do that again. So we go place from area here. There we go. Okay, so we've got 1200 by 800 by 400. Just going to save that off. We can see that we have our part list, so we can see that quantity is one, 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 one. If we had four legs here, obviously it would come up with four legs. We can see the material, we can see the description that we put in for the top. Uh, and it's got balloons so it's very easy for people to see okay well what's needed here to build this so if i do go back to my untitled here and i decide to go into my parameters and change this to 1000 we go back to 500 let's go to depth of 600 and we go back to 15 mil and okay dash and then let's save dash and let's go and we'll notice that over here it's telling us that something has changed within this model the minute i click this you'll see the 1200 the 800 and the 400 all update very quickly and there we go so now we're 1500 and 600 so you can see and the model changes very quickly so everything is very streamlined within fusion uh, and it's very simple to do all these updates Obviously, because we've changed this, we'd have to go into the top place, right click, go into the properties, because over here, it's still telling us that it's 1200. So this is the only area that you want to be careful of. But again, you don't need to put in the description of the dimensions because your dimensions should be all covered with inside here also. Um, let me think. So yeah, so that's kind of a, a good um, uh, plan for fusion at the moment. So next thing I want to do is, okay, I want to manufacture this. Uh, before that, I'll just go back and we'll have a look at our timeline. So let's go all the way back to the start. I'll press play on the video recorder and we can see how this was built up and how it was modeled. And it gives us a nice little display. Which is always nice to see how the designer did uh, up a model. So we have that timeline to be able to do that. So we want to manufacture this part. So we want to see what's going to happen here so we're going to go into our design environment we're going to switch from design into manufacture and we're going to look at um, dropping this whole model so if we come up here to our setup I want to create a manufacturing model meaning any updates I do in this manufacturing model won't have any effect to the actual design so if I right click my manufacturing model I can do an edit on this I can create a sketch and let me just create a sketch of uh, let's just say we have a plank of wood that is a sheet of wood that's 2000 by 2000 and finish sketch I want to go and modify I want to go into arrange I want to select all of these parts and I want to pop them on here let that update and you can see it just drops everything on here if I needed to switch a few of these around so if I was to look at the bottom floor and I wanted to turn it upside down I can turn the arrow on this where's the one the ridge oh the ridge is here so there you can see the ridge so if I was to turn this one back upside down there's the ridge on that one as well um, and if I go back in here, if we say, because there's only a tiny wee gap here of 6.35, if I want to open that out because I was using a 10 mil end mil or something, I can put in a gap of 15, that'll update. And again, I can do 15 there also. Sorry, this, the second one was the 15, which is between objects. The first one, the 15, was from the edge of the material all the way out. So now we can go OK on that. And we can see that we actually have plenty. Oh, this part over here didn't fit. Uh, why is that? So maybe I have to go back into range. Maybe it just didn't select that piece. Hmm. Okay, let me try again. Let's get all of these. 
for some reason it will not drop that one on there so again I'm not going to spend too much time looking at that maybe i need to so the nice thing about this is if i go back into my sketch and i actually just remove the dimensions of this 2000 2000 so now it's actually uh, just a square which means i can manipulate this square like this so it obviously just didn't fit so there we are i can manipulate this if i go down this way push this up this way now they're not fitting and you can kind of figure out what size of a sheet that we need in order for us to make this so if i just go uh, okay on that i off my sketches because they're annoying me mm, sorry Okay, so now that we have that, we can see that the actual lake is in there as well, so we could actually go in and just get rid of that lake because we don't want to be cutting that. So I can go into Arrange, Edit the Arrange, Remove this guy. And now, okay, so there's the lake back over here. So if I go back into my design, you'll notice our cabinet is still exactly how it's meant to be. If I want to change any designs, if I go into my manufacturer, we have it all set in flat. Um, so if I was to go back into my design and say I will actually create go into my parameters and I go well, this is actually going to be 1400 we go with uh, 800 we leave all of that the same okay that updates our model here went to manufacturing and it actually updates inside here also meaning everything's gotten bigger so now it won't fit so I'd have to go into my manufacturing model, I'd edit this, pull this over, and drops everything back in very quickly. So you can see how simple it is to start uh, creating. So now that we have that done, uh, I want to cut all of these on the, the CNC router. So I'll come over here. I want to create a setup. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time with this. So I want to select my setup. I'm going to be milling it. I'm going to select my origin point, uh, model box. XYZ is correct. So again, because it's, uh, I'd have to spend a bit of time on this to kind of set up correctly. So let's just go with this point up here for now. I can go into my stock. I can tell my stock what it is. If it's fixed size box or fixed size. Uh, so the idea is when you get this uh, um, sketch correct in dimensions, I'll put in my actual dimensions here and here. So my depth should only be like 10 or whatever it is. And that's the wrong way. So that should be dash height 15. And 1000. Anyway, we'll just go OK on this for now. So we've created up our setup. And then it's just a matter of um, running your 2D contour around the part and simulate it. Again, I'm not going to spend too, or any time doing that. That's another day for another webinar, for another training session, in order how to use the CAM environment. But you can see how simple it is to start doing everything within Fusion from your model or your design, and then going straight into modeling, nesting the parts, dropping the parts, cutting the parts. We have a, a rendering environment here in Fusion 360 with an animation, which means you can uh, have everything animated and how it goes together so if you wanted to do an explode view and say drop the bottom piece then drop in four dowels and drop the next the left and the right and the top etc 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 we could do a little animation movie inside here as well we've got simulation from um, all the different tests stress testing buckling testing thermal testing uh, flow testing uh, there's a huge amount of simulations inside here with generative design the main focus today was on the design and manufacturing if I go back to my PowerPoint and we're finished the live demo so again these are just small little renders that did come out of uh, Fusion 360 when you do spend a little bit of time just messing around with properties and lighting and uh, background scenarios we can get these realistic renders from our model uh, we can see here the staircase that I created it's just a small little render um, so that that's basically the end of the webinar um, we have a, a slide there just from um, a workshop, how they've used Fusion 360 within their woodworking um, business.
So I'm just going to hide that. And I'm just going to jump in here and have a look at a few questions here. And again, I might end up just uh, coming back to you on email on this. Is it possible to create solid without doing sketches? I'm doing model of my parents. Da, 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 da to create sketches so yeah it is possible to create models uh, without using sketches so what I can do very quickly I'll just share my screen there again uh, come over here okay so what I'm going to do is just show very quickly without creating a sketch how you create a model so if I come into create you can see here in our drop down we've got create sketch but we can also create boxes, cylinders, spheres, torsos, etc. So if I go for a box, select a plane, and I can just start dragging out this straight away. So I can go 100 by 100, press enter, and go 100. So there we have a cube created without creating a sketch. Uh, obviously, um, by creating sketches, we'll give you a hell of a lot more um, uh, flexibility on what you can do with your designs. Uh, creating models without creating sketches just... Um, to me would be very difficult. I'd never create uh, models without sketches. So that is that answered. Uh, again, you can drop me an email, drop me a call if you, if you want to um, look at that uh, or go further into that. So I'm just looking. Excellent. So again, yeah, I just want to uh, thank everyone today for taking their time to jump onto this webinar. Um, and hopefully you've benefited out of this as well. Um, so yeah, uh, as I said, you have my email address. You have Elaine, Jackie, and all those email addresses. Uh, give us a shout if you want to talk, if you want to see another little bit of a demo, uh, we can do that. But um, again, um, we have public training courses. We have customized training courses. We have private training courses. All uh, contact Jackie for more information. It would be myself that would be training you as well as well. So, um, yeah, maybe you're just sick of listening to my voice. No harm. Thanks so much for attending, everyone. And uh, super. We'll leave it at that.